And I came on board, immediately realized that this was going to be a huge collaborative process, and I ended up loving it. Everybody, you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time, and I felt like it might be like a little bit like network television series, when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets to pitch their own ideas, and everybody's ideas, no matter how crazy they are, are heard. Um, so I felt like we were really at a big pitch meeting, to be honest with you, and Darla set it up so that we did have to bring a pitch. Everybody had to have a pitch, and really it was so fascinating. Everybody had different ideas, and then what we ended up doing was taking the best of the best of everybody's ideas and making them into something new. We created something new out of everybody's ideas, and you know, hence the original program. And I came on board immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process and I ended up loving it. Everybody you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time and I felt like it might be like a little bit like network television series when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets to pitch their own ideas and everybody's ideas no matter how crazy they are are heard. Um, so I felt like we were really at a big pitch meeting to be honest with you and Darla set it up so that we did have to bring a pitch. Everybody had to have a pitch and really it was so fascinating. Everybody had different ideas and then what we ended up doing was taking the best of the best of everybody's ideas and making them into something new. We created something new out of everybody's ideas and you know hence the original programming for the final hour. And I came on board immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process and I ended up loving it. Everybody you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time and I felt like it might be like a little bit like network television series when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets to pitch their own ideas and everybody's ideas no matter how crazy they are are heard. Um, so I felt like we were really at a big pitch meeting to be honest with you and Darla set it up so that we did have to bring a pitch. Everybody had to have a pitch and really it was so fascinating. Everybody had different ideas and then what we ended up doing was taking the best of the best of everybody's ideas and making them into something new. We created something new out of everybody's ideas and you know hence the original programming for the final hour. Yeah, my name is JJ Baker and I came in as a photography uh, intern. And I came on board immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process and I ended up loving it. Everybody you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time and I felt like it might be like a little bit like network television series when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets And I came on board, immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process, and I ended up loving it. Everybody you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time, and I felt like it might be like a little bit like network television series, when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets to pitch their own ideas, and everybody's ideas, no matter how crazy they are, are heard. Um, so I felt like we were really at a big pitch meeting, to be honest with you, and Darla set it up. And I came on board, immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process, and I ended up loving it. Everybody you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time, and I felt like 
it might be like a little bit like network television series when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets to pitch their own ideas and everybody's ideas, no matter how crazy they are, are heard. Um, so I felt like we were really at a big pitch meeting, to be honest with you, and Darla set it up and I came on board, immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process and I ended up loving it. Everybody you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time and I felt like it might be like a little bit like network television series when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets to pitch their own ideas and everybody's ideas, no matter how crazy they are, are heard. Um, so I felt like we were really at a big pitch meeting, to be honest with you, and Darla set it up so that we did have And I came on board, immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process, and I ended up loving it. Everybody you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time, and I felt like it might be like a little bit like network television series, when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets to pitch their own ideas and everybody's ideas, and I came on board, immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process, and I ended up loving it. Everybody, you know, got to share their own ideas, everybody got equal time, and I felt like it might be like a little bit like network television series when everybody sits around a big table and everybody gets to pitch their own ideas and everybody's ideas, no matter how crazy they are, are heard. Um, so I felt like we were really at a big pitch meeting, to be honest with you, and Darla set it up so that we did have to bring a pitch. Everybody had to have a pitch and really it was so fascinating. Everybody had different ideas and then what we ended up doing was taking the best of the best of everybody's ideas and making them into something new. We created something new out of everybody's ideas and, you know, hence the original programming for the final hour. And I came on board, immediately realized that this was going to be a, a huge collaborative process, and I ended up loving it. Everybody, you know, got My name is Levi Burdick, and I play Luke Mathers, uh, investigative reporter. And what is Luke's story? Luke is kind of a loner, a, a guy who is uh, self-sufficient, made it through life on his own, self-reliant, and um, he's basically reached a turning point in his life where he has to determine if self-survival, self-preservation is more important than the love of his life, the woman who has come into his life and uh, basically made him look somewhere other than the mirror. My name is Doug Kalish. My character's name is Walter Goldsmith. Walter is in a situation where he has been married for a long, long time, madly in love with his wife. But unfortunately, she's gotten a case of uh, Alzheimer's and is slowly disappearing as far as her mind and connecting her with him. And it's a pretty terrible thing. So knowing the end of the world or whatever is coming, at the end of the hour, um, he's desperate to find somebody who will help him or something that will help him to get her to the point where um, she'll re at least have some recognition of who he is before things come to an end. Uh, I, I never got a chance to read the entire script, so I really was only... Um, had access to portions of the script, the portions that he was involved with. So, um, but I did have a chance ultimately to read the whole script, and I it it, it became a lot more real for me, a, a, a lot more organic, if you will, <laughs> uh, to me. Um, and uh, what really impressed me more than anything was the acting that took place uh, during the. Um, Auditions. There were several scenes that actually brought a tear to my eye, believe it or not. Um, and uh, it began to all make sense to me uh, as a result of seeing it go on. Uh, I, it was much more um, meaningful to see it happen. I'm June Mazur, and I played Beatrice Goldsmith in The Final Hour. Beatrice is uh, an older woman married to Walter, 
whom she calls Wally, and uh, she unfortunately has Alzheimer's. Uh, she's still in a mild to moderate state, so that uh, she functions pretty well, but she gets confused about who people are and uh, mixes up uh, father and, and husband sometimes. But she and Walter have a wonderful relationship, and apparently she and her dad did too. Again, the, the, the idea was that he was desperate to try to find some link that would get her back to recognizing who he is, what he is, because what a horrible thing to happen. Here the end of the earth is coming, perhaps, and there'll be no recollection, no last memory that she would have of him. No memory of him at all. So it was that sort of a significance to me anyway. Well, in addition, getting the opportunity to uh, run my scene with several different actresses. Um, traditionally, you just get to see uh, basically the lens of a camera. You tape your interview or you might get to see the casting director. So getting the opportunity to audition directly for the producer and the director was a, a, a real privilege and it was a rare treat nowadays. So um, add on top of that the, um, the overall setting, have a, having all the actors in the room, it really threw me back to my theatrical days where you audition in front of a crowd full of people. I liked it, I enjoyed it, and hopefully I took advantage of it. The second casting call I definitely thought was interesting, when we got the callbacks, because it was everybody in the room, you go down stage and you did everything for everyone, so it was like, if you've got it, bring it, and everyone's going to see. So I thought that was really cool, and I thought it was great to actually build the chemistry with everyone else, um, you know, in that setting. Uh, the initial call, uh, the initial casting call, it was cool, you know, went in, met the director, producer, everything, and just kind of read through the script and gave my interpretation, but then when we got the call back, got a little bit more from their interpretation, so it was cool. The casting call. Oh, really, um, the range of poor actors versus decent actors that came through. There, and when I say poor, I, it's clearly inexperienced people who didn't have an awful lot of background who would tend to overact things and not really read. On the other hand, there were some people who overacted. Uh, clearly had a lot of experience, but just would scream and holler and cry on the stage when it really wasn't necessary to go through all that. It was their interpretation, I understand, but it just didn't work for me. Um. I feel like I always have a, um, you know, kind of a, a private process for getting ready for a role, um, which basically just pulls me and the character together so that I'm not playing someone else. I'm just bringing myself in moments of my own life, moments of, you know, experiences that I've had that pull out those same emotions. And um, that's, that's really my process. And, you know, I got some steps that I go through. To really get in the mindset of being separated from loved ones, I kind of secluded myself from my friends and my family as if, like, it's the end. Like, I said my goodbyes to them and didn't speak to them, didn't answer their phone calls, didn't see them up until the film, up until shooting. I just wanted to get that feel of like really being detached from loved ones. So yeah. that was my preparation. Uh, I really didn't have to do anything to prepare because I have had family members um, who have had dementia and so I had seen how that played out. And I also have an actor friend whose parents are in stages of dementia, both of them, and she was supportive in telling me that she thought I acted it just the way her mother does from day to every day. So just knowing that I didn't really have to do anything more was very supportive for me. Hey, my name is Josh Saderman, and I'm the Director of Photography and Post-Production Intern for No Fear Here Productions. 
since it's the end of the world, I knew it had to have sort of like a slightly gritty, you know, thriller kind of look to it. Um, so I was, I did a lot of uh, research on other post-apocalyptic films, and I came across the film The Road, and it definitely had a look that was, you know, that I liked. The pre-production was uh, pretty interesting. That they gave us the final uh, version of the script about two weeks before we were shooting. So I basically had two weeks to storyboard along with Evan and Denise um, and create a shot list for the film. Um, but you know, the first thing that we had to come up with was giving like a, a certain look that we wanted to the film. So we came across that during, you know, doing some research on other films, referencing um, shots. And then we went into, uh, you know, the next thing was coming up with what shots are necessary to tell the story. So uh, I'm Evan Williams, I was uh, one of the DP interns, and I was the gaffer slash grip on the shoot. Um, Pre-production for me involved a lot of um, seeing what kind of gear I could round up, just doing um, checks on my equipment and anything that I was going to bring to the set, make sure that you know the dimmer boxes that I built were operating, making sure that um, all my lights, you know, there weren't any shorts or anything was wrong with the fuses, making sure that when we got to set, everything I brought was going to operate, and then um, working with Josh, we, um, we both kind of put together a shot list of our the things that we thought were the most important scenes and the kind of most distinct things that we wanted to try, and then came together and tried to see, you know, what we felt about everything, and, and for the most part we are on the same page about a lot of the look and feel and the style of it, and a lot of the shots, and then we went through the whole script scene by scene and, and did shot list for that. Well, uh, Darla Clarkson came up to me and she asked me to be involved with this next project. And uh, I was already sort of the head of the video department here at No Fear Here. So it was just sort of a natural progression to go towards uh, leading and uh, leading into a, a, a active role on this project. And I really enjoyed uh, just helping out. Every time I get a chance to be on a movie set, I always jump on it because you get to expand your network, you get to learn new skills, you get to see what other people bring to the table and what you can learn from it. It's always a great learning experience and it's something that I never shy away from. Ever since I decided this is my career uh, to be involved in the movie industry, I, I jump on any any excuse I can to get on a set. So this, uh, the script supervisor is responsible for making notes for the editor primarily. They make sure that continuity wise everything is the same and if there's a mistake or maybe the lines are different or you know the actor was holding something in one hand and you know, and the, they switch it over and they have it in the wrong hand this time. We hopefully will take note of that before we start to roll, and if we don't, then we need to make note of it for the editor to make sure that they don't use that cut and that we need to use something else. So basically, it's really helpful for the editor to have those notes afterwards so that they know which cut to use and which one not to use. I personally made sure that I was very involved with the DP and the camera operator and the director to make sure that I could take note of everything. I had constant, you know, tons of paper in front of me at all times with lots of notes on it. And I just made note of every single shot we did and made sure to collaborate with the um, clapper operator as well so that we were always on the same page. And I also um, took lots of pictures. Darla made sure I took lots of continuity photos so that we could, um, if we ever had to reshoot anything or had to go back and redo anything, that we knew exactly what we needed and we knew exactly how we had left things last time we were shooting. Hi, I'm Brittany and I am the castings intern for this quarter at No Fear Here. On set, I was Slater. Um, I work with Jenna to pretty much keep the scenes organized and I'm in every scene by the way. I do have my little cameo in the movie so I'm in every scene saying alright this is the scene, this is the take, mark. So I got to be on set for every scene since I was the slate person which is really cool because I got to see all the action happen and just kind of be in the mix and just watch our incredible actors work so just slating and um, keeping everything organized along with the script supervisor. I love the behind the scenes photography. It was um, it was just great just to catch the people um, in that moment and I just love snapping the shots. I, I really tried to get most of the shots during the rehearsals but um, yeah it was, it was actually a lot of fun. 
I definitely learned that less is more and quality over quantity. Um, I I knew it in the back of my head, but I get so enthusiastic and so into like taking pictures that sometimes I just start snapping away. And I just had to remember, you know, as many photos as I take, that's how many I'm going to have to shuffle through and mm -hmm. edit. So I was like, less is more, get the shot at that time and make it count whatever shots I get. Denise is a great director. She, she's a, she comes from documentary directing. Um, so, you know, that definitely helps a lot when you come into the narrative world because, um, you, you know, you, you're, work, you're coming from raw emotions with real life situations and bringing it into a narrative fiction world, which is great. Um, when I did the shot list for my documentary, uh, it was just all about where I was placing people for the interviews and it wasn't so detailed about where the camera would be and all of that. So. That was different. Um, very precise things on scenes for a narrative film. Where I'm doing a documentary, there were really no scenes. There were just sections of interviews that I set up according to specific questions I had. And the camera got to run and run and run. And with this, uh, you know, the process was a little bit different. It was more tighter control. Uh, there was a definite beginning and ending and um, very interesting for me to learn the narrative side of it versus the documentary side, and I enjoyed it. I like to immediately talk to my actors and actresses when I get on set. I like to take each one of them aside and personally talk to them, ask about, you know, if they have any questions or concerns, go over the script, ask them how they feel about it. Um, I let them know right away that I am here to work with them and that it is a collaborative process, and if they have some great suggestions, please let me know, we'll discuss it. And so that's what I first do, I set a tone of safety and acceptance. And then once we film, if I see something that's not quite working, I really don't focus on that, I focus on what was working first. And then I would personally take them aside and say, listen, here's what you did that was great, and I would just like to see you try this, let's try it a different way. And then I let them decide really how they want to try it. I would make some simple suggestions, but if they come up with something on an improvisational note that's better, then absolutely I'm so open to going with that. I'm very picky about who I work with. And again, that sounds pretentious of me, but it just, as you grow as an actor, you want to work with better and better people. So everybody works so well together that it really let me have the freedom just to do my job and not to worry about what it's going to look like later. So I think that's what made it awesome to work with and and I know that it's going to come out and be fabulous. I really had no idea that it was interns and apprenticeships working on this and that this was the first project that everyone had done together because it was so well oiled as a machine if that's the right way of saying it it just it worked so well together i mean it is important i think for everyone to focus on what their duty is or what their job in um in the filmmaking process is it isn't it shouldn't be strictly about us because it is about the greater good and about the film itself but everyone was focused on their their work but they were focused on their work because they wanted a good film. And I think um, because of that, it really does show. It was so easy to just really have that connection with all my cast members. I really felt like, and I feel it, it had, it was mad, I call it magic because it was on set, it was when the camera was rolling and it was when the camera wasn't rolling. Quentin was like my best friend, we talked about a lot. Bernard was like a father who had his opinion, his stern opinion on certain things. Um, Isaiah was, oh I'm saying, yeah. Isaiah was like my best friend. Um, his father was like a father. Luke was like my husband. Like I, we weren't married, but I felt that love connection. Like I, I had a real interest with him besides the fact that he's attractive. <laughs> so it was great. It was great. I was so excited when I got the email and I had a call sheet. And I showed it to my mom, I showed it to my sister, I showed it to my dad, because they know how I felt about my other sets that I had been on. So when I saw in 15, inter uh, 15 minute intervals everything that we were going to be doing, I was very excited because I knew I was immediately walking into a very organized set. And that's something that I think 
movie wise if you're not organized and if you don't have someone as a head that's saying we need to get this done and we need to get it done now you're not going to have a successful production but at the same time it wasn't a thing where there was anybody just overpowering and overbearing and like a dictator you know we still had a ton of fun while getting everything we needed to get done done so it was an incredible experience as soon as I went home I was I'm so excited. <laughs> Told my family all about it. So, yeah, so I, I, I love being on set. I felt like uh, Darla has done an outstanding job putting together, I don't know how she does it, but she seems to pull together a, this crowd of people that don't even know each other that are instantly able to connect and become a cohesive working group. She keeps a fun atmosphere. The crew was great. Everybody was willing to volunteer to do whatever job. Nobody played the diva. Nobody wanted to you know, just do this or just do that. Everybody was hands-on and everybody was all in. And that made the entire set fantastic. I've worked on feature films. I've worked on um, reg TV shows, the regular hit shows. And this was as, as professional as any job I've worked on and without all the drama. I mean, it was a, it was a very nice change to uh, some of the professional sets out there. I felt like they kept things rolling. The uh, information flow was great. Um, everybody was on time, everybody was prepared, everybody, everybody knew their stuff. We had a great time on set with the final hour, and I've had great times on other sets, but it hasn't been as productive on other sets. Because if you don't stay focused on what the shot is, or what the goal of the scene, or how can we make this better, um, it gets distracting, I think. My favorite part was the scene in front of the fireplace when um, connecting with my husband, whom I thought was my father. But that was my favorite part. I, there was reminiscing and a, a connecting with my, uh, with the character's father, and yet standing up against him for her husband as well. I think the most thing, I, the best thing I learned from it was uh, how to problem solve. There were a lot of times where, you know, th something wasn't working the way we wanted or needed it to work, so we'd have to quickly think on our, think on our feet and uh, make the, you know, come up with a a, a uh, solution for it. Um, so it was pretty cool, and uh, yeah. Oh, some of the other things that, uh, it, memorable moments, definitely when it comes to camera work and lighting and uh, making this film happen was we made a homemade cookie. And no, it's not a chocolate chip yummy thing. It's actually a device that you shine light through, which puts a light texture on a wall. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun to make. And we were making it, we were just cutting cardboard and you know taking this big square piece of cardboard and cutting holes in it, nod shapes and running tape across it. And we ended up shooting an awesome texture, which a normal viewer might not even know, but that's the great part of being uh, on a crew that's really detailed oriented. We spent all day just putting that little bit of light texture behind one of uh, the actors in the scenes, and it was just, it all came together so well. It's its great when you put in two hours on uh, lighting a scene and it ends up looking great. Like, it's worth it. It doesn't seem like a waste of time at all. I don't think they're really, I, I wouldn't say favorite. I think uh, the most encouraging person was Josh our director of photography and I think he did such a wonderful job and just seemed to know what he saw what he wanted so he was able to set up the cameras and the lighting and everything with others help of course but he knew what he wanted and he was encouraging whatever uh, he liked what we had done so I would I would say that was very special my favorite Crew member, definitely Natalie. I mean, this right here takes a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> Darla is a very talented producer. Um, she's she thinks logically, which is great. Uh, behind the management of filmmaking, um, she you know she knows if we, if logically if we can get things done. Um, and then she's you know there was a time on set where uh, someone I think we we're uh, at a location and someone showed up. Um, the house owner showed up, or no, sorry, the it was a real estate agent showed yeah, up to, to show uh, someone the house that because it, it was an abandoned house we were shooting at, and she immediately went over and you know dealt with the situation quickly and quietly, uh, and you know we got we managed to continue working in the meantime and it, it was a great, you know it got we got things done efficiently.
because of her. Yeah, uh, Christian was great to work with, absolutely. Um, he was my camera operator, uh, and he did an incredible job, you know, framing, composing the shots. Uh, I had no issues, you know, he he definitely, you can tell him what you want, and he'll, he'll immediately, no problem, get it done. Um, he doesn't, you know, there's, 
there's no arguing, you know, there's no, you know, conflicts between me and him. Um, we just, you know, a great person to collaborate with. It was great collaborating with Darla, actually. She, uh, she ended up being the first AD for the film. Um, so she, she basically, you know, she kept us all on point, on track. Uh, she was like the master timekeeper for the set, which definitely helped since we had so much, we had such an ambitious schedule. Um, so she, uh, you know, she, she kept us all on point and, uh, and you know, we, we got things done. Josh, what was it like during pre-production of the final hour? Uh, it was pretty stressful actually. Um, we got the script back. Uh, I think uh, we had two weeks until production at this point. Um, so we had the final version of the script now, um, and it was mine and Evan's turn to you know create a shot list and a look for the film. Um, so me and him were pretty much getting together every single day for those fourteen days before production. Um, you know, going through each scene, uh, developing a shot list and, and like lighting styles for it. Um, and, uh, and then basically from there, uh, well then we decided what equipment we would need, you know, all the technical stuff. Uh, and we got with the, the props department, uh, production design department, I mean, uh, to see like exactly what props were going to, how it was going to work. how we're going to create the look for each scene because um, there's one with like the you know it's set by a fireplace so we had to make sure that we had a working fireplace and logs um, and you know a Christmas tree nearby with lights I think my favorite part of the intern experience was uh, working on set um, I think that was like the the main point for everyone because everything we had been working for had finally you know it, you starting to pay off we, you know we're we it all comes down to those three days um for the you know that three months in advance we're all it was all pre-production for that so um yeah it was you know i had a great time on set um it helped me a lot Uh, okay. To someone, to someone who's a new uh, apprentice here at No Fear Here Productions, I would just, I would basically say, just that, uh, you know, put as much time into it as you can. Step up to the plate because it, it really does pay off. Um, you know, if you if you produce something well, you know, put in some good work here and produce something that comes out nice. Uh, it would definitely, it's something that's good for your portfolio or you know, someone else another client could see your work through No Fear Productions um, and get you some more work. Um, you know, so it's definitely put in the, the effort that you need to to get your job done. Um, and also take advantage of, uh, you know, of, of how collaborative it is. Like everyone, everyone works really well together and you can't, a movie can't be made alone. Um, so definitely collaborate with everyone because everyone else just is incredible too. Um, and you just, and together you make something that's great.
in the final hour we have uh, all these different sub stories and subplots. Um, I think the the one that I liked the best was uh, Walter and Betty's story, um, just because it was the most unique. Uh, I think it's it's pretty interesting, like uh, someone looking for recollection, have it, you know, have his wife remember who he is before the end of the world. Um, that's something that can you know people can relate to, and it's very like. You know, it's it's emotional and it's, it's different. It's not cliche. Uh, 